I'll just rip it one more time. The beat's starting to slow down, but I'm finding my rhyme. I'm running out of time. Look at me, I got this dime. Just kidding, it's Patty D. You know that guy is the man <laughs> with the plan like Uncle Sammy's going ham. Put the money in his hand. He'll heat it up in his pan. He's in the kitchen. He's trying to fix and use something yummy to eat. Just trying to get off of the street. Quesadilla. Oh, yeah. I'm feeling this beat. Yeah, man. I love every time you go to talk about another woman, you're like, just kidding. I'm in a committed relationship. <laughs> <laughs> you said it again. You're like, I got a dime. Just kidding. That's just my friend, Patrick. <laughs> We've been interviewing a lot of guests and I missed you. I missed these solo episodes. Yes. And I, I know that we've also just been focusing a lot on sales um, and customer success. Ugh. We need to give marketing some love. Exactly. Yeah. The true center of an organization. Well, okay. Without marketing, what would we be? That sounds very sarcastic. It's only slightly sarcastic. I actually do believe that. I think marketing <laughs> is incredibly important. Good. I just don't like it. This is a stupid stance to take because if you did like it, you'd probably do a lot better in sales. Broccoli is, is great for you. Don't like it. I actually really like broccoli. Jesus. That's why you like marketing. <laughs> See, this is it. This is the problem. <laughs> um, do you remember how a couple episodes ago we interviewed our friend Cat Lim and we talked about mood boards? Yeah. And... Um, we talked about like how creatives have to pitch as well. I didn't think about that. Right. It like, makes sense. But like, I didn't think about the fact that they also have to sell their services. And um, I went on to ad age, which is a website that you would never go to, but they had this amazing article uh, where this director, Eno Friedman Broadman created a short film called the pitch. And it's absolutely fucking hilarious. And I'm going to show you a segment from it. Let's do it. All right. Shoots in LA, right? That should be up your alley. You're, right. You're in LA, aren't you? I am in LA. Fantastic. So we're thinking the hills. Yeah. Love it. Should be a cool arch dodge home. You know, dwell, the magazine dwell. Think dwell. Oh, yeah, I love dwell. Actually, maybe even a more lived in red one because red's one of the brand colors. That'd be great. So we wanted to start with this young, hip girl in her apartment. You know, she's real. She's authentic. She's not really a model, but she's very, 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 very attractive. Right? <laughs> so she goes to the fridge. She realizes it's empty. <laughs> Been there, done that. She shrugs it off. She goes into her living room, try to pick up her mood, you know, listen to some tunes. But her sound system, it's old. There's, there's wires everywhere. Spaghetti. It's trash. Love spaghetti. <laughs> Suddenly, she hears a knock at the door. She opens the door. She finds a box of Nondo's chicken nuggets made from real recycled <laughs> cornstarch. Right? It's from her co-worker, Jess. Yeah? Because Jess knows she's had a rough day. She's even bought her the new panko breaded Bluetooth speakers from the limited <laughs> Nondo's <laughs> I love that beat. I love that beat. You know, everyone needs a Jess. That's what know? Nondo says. <laughs> right? We cut to her eating the steamy nuggets as a nice product shot there. Oh and then we yeah. came back, popping to some bread crumb base. <laughs> Love this account. Uh, anyway, so, mate, uh, obviously we'd love to hear your thoughts on it. So, Tim, have you ever seen that movie Tree of Life? Oh, it's super cinematic. <laughs> I want real human emotions, you know? There's, like, this awesome shot with her fingers going through the grass fields. And, like, the grass represents Mother Earth. And the fingers, obviously, represent the human connection. It's like... Uh, Can she drag lead? a nugget across the grass? She could. Uh, maybe she finds a nugget. <laughs> like, as if the nuggets were... I just want to watch that whole thing. That's I know. incredible. I don't want to make our listeners listen to more than like a minute and a half of this, but it, this is an eight-minute short film um, that highlights how ad projects go to die. And some things that kind of stood out to me um, she wrote, uh, I wanted to make a film which shined a light on the concept of where dead jobs might go and the creative bankruptcy involved when pitching with endless references and no real idea in sight. In my quest to become a commercial director, I was advised to start making treatments for other directors to see their pitch style and be exposed to the process. And while I took this advice and gained a tremendous amount of insight, I was overwhelmed at the contest like approach to the industry. Uh, watching a six second YouTube pre-roll of a Doritos ad might not shed light on the creative armies it took to make it and the other companies who tried so hard to make the ad and meet the client's budget, but walk, walked away giving ideas and losing the job. Wow. So it's funny because what I gained from that was haha, funny thing. And I would watch that ad and it would probably <laughs> work on me. Like that first one, I was like, I want some of those chicken nuggets. <laughs> 
you were talking and laughing over the part where they described what the chicken nuggets are made of. And they said like processed cornstarch. <laughs> The actual chicken part is going to start. Yeah. So the speaker is being chicken. The and panko bread is speakers. I just, I saw this and I had to share it just because it, it really tied into um, a part that does go unseen. Uh, and I think that a lot of marketers don't realize uh, or salespeople realize as part of the marketing process uh, when you're trying to pitch an idea, whether that be to a client because you work for an agency or if you work at a software company like us, like, I have to pitch an idea um, on how to expand this podcast next week. Ooh, we should do that and then animate it like that. So you've got a girl running through the fields <laughs> and maybe a chicken nugget pops in. She finds one there. And Patrick comes out from behind a tree and he makes an inappropriate joke that we have to cut. And that's that's the show. That's the whole show. Every week. That's Every the week. Show. I like that we just took Will's accent and we're like, that's part of our thing now. <laughs> um. But you've been looped into a couple commercials and demos lately, mm -hmm. uh, more and more over the last year. So I thought you'd get a kick out of it. And yeah, for those that don't know, Patrick was recently involved in a pretty huge production. Uh, we shipped him up to New York City for a full day of shooting. Yep. And he uh, recorded several PandaDoc demo videos with all the fixings in a, a commercial studio with a full production crew, hair, makeup. And I actually have some behind the scenes footage that I haven't shown you oh, yet. God. And context, this was the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. Yeah. I would say like every part of my sales career is nothing compared to going into a studio without having read the script, really seeing it on a teleprompter and being told go yeah. and then having to do a take 30 times. You said it gave you, on you like more respect for actors because you're like, how the fuck do you do this all the time? Yeah, my voice started to drop out because you record for eight hours straight. Yeah. Your voice just disappears. Like sometimes I'd be talking and it's just gone. And I was just <laughs> like how many that. how many shirts did you sweat through? Six. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Dude, the lights like it wasn't just this. It yeah. was like crazy lights on you. And then you also got three people looking at you like this. Watching you. Oh, hey, what's going on? Everybody? He's got to get the take this time. Are they rolling blunts in their fingers? <laughs> 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 to get through my performance they're like i need to get very high <laughs> but anyway here's some behind the scenes footage of patrick after he got his makeup done and the wardrobe team getting him into costume some might say that it maybe it got a little bit you know to your head so let's pull it up real quick this here is velvet not velveteen a gentleman must learn the difference my lord well, I need a window seat because this flower is well. Wow, oh, Patrick. Oh, Lord. Wow, right, I do look really good. Go, 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 go. <laughs> I do believe I'll give room service a jangle and have them send up some etouffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, man, I just, I think you came back from New York different. And I, I think your your team, your sales team that reports to you would probably agree that maybe the marketing videos got a little to your head. Did they? Who told you that? I mean, I'm not going to kiss and tell. <laughs> what are you doing with my team? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a phrase. <laughs> um, yeah. So any takeaways from the experience that you want to share, whether it's with salespeople or marketing people about doing high production videos like that? Yeah, I think it's easy to look at a end result and be like, oh, it's like a two minute to four minute thing. That's cool. That looks nice. Yeah. Uh, and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm sure hard work went into it. But when you're actually in it, it's like, wow, this is mm -hmm. crazy work. And I know a lot of people want to be in creative jobs because it is fulfilling and rewarding. But it was probably the most exhausting thing I've ever done in my life. So I think people should try something like that before they go full steam. Cause I think some people are built for that too. Like someone else might've gone to that situation and been like, that was the best day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I so like, I got to do this all day and I felt that way in a way, but like I was, I couldn't have done it again the next day. I would have been too tired. I'm just not built for it. Let's show a preview of it. If that's okay with you, let's go for it. By the time this episode comes out, the video will be done. This is the unfinished version, but I just wanted to give the audience a sneak peek of what we were working on. Pick it out from here. So for the for context of those just jumping into this and listening, we wanted to make 
demo videos for our demand gen team um, and for our content team um, that were more than just a screen share, a screen recording, which is what we have now. And we wanted to elevate it. We wanted it to be, again, these are five minute videos, some of them. What's gonna hold your attention for five minutes? It's, it better be something good. Um, so we wanted it to be equal parts informative and cheeky. Yes, and also for a little Easter egg, look behind me to the left in the background. There's a little something there's special a little, there. There's a little thing. I like that. Yeah, me too. What's that play? Sign the recipient and send that bad away. But I want to pause just in case you want to marinate on the glorious user interface I just showed. It's okay. I can wait. <laughs> Thank you for marinating. One of the best parts about Pandadoc for salespeople is your ability to track and monitor what happens to your documents after you get sent. You'll receive emails and push notifications if you're using our mobile app each time a recipient engages with your document by viewing it, downloading it, or completing it. That means no more sitting in the dark, twiddling your thumbs, wondering what's going on with your deal. In case you're wondering, here's what your recipient sees once you get sent. They'll receive an email where they can review any tight messages. Shout out to Rocky for getting us these the screen, screen recordings. Screen that recordings look, are tight. They look tight. Did a good job Most on Most recipients are not Panadoc users, but that's no problem at all. From the link, they'll see your gorgeous proposal and be prompted to complete any fields you've assigned to them. Money. Plus, they can customize the pricing table you created to update any product amounts that they want to adjust. At the very end, your prospect can draw, type, or upload an image of their signature. It's a good deal size. Time. These electronic signatures are legally binding across the US, Canada, and many other countries across the world. Many salespeople create documents just like this from inside their CRM, like Salesforce, HubSpot, or PipeDrive. If this is something that you're really interested in, click the link in the description to see how this functionality can work for your team. There are also many, many more additional features that we didn't cover in this demo, but they're available on our paid plans. <laughs> <laughs> Features like feature. <laughs> well, that about covers it. While I hope this demonstration was helpful, it's possible you still need to dive into your specific business requirements and go through your- Your eyes look really nice. If that's the case. Yeah. Very brown. It be finally time to talk so. with a real live person I, by clicking this link now. Honeycomb brown. All right. I'll miss you, but we'll always have this product demo together. Our special time. <laughs> <laughs> so good, dude. So fucking good. Um, I did that specific line a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, good job, man. Thank you. Really, really good job. We appreciate, appreciate you. Man. And it was it was very fun. It's the kind of thing where I think if you did it a lot, you would get used to it. And like, oh, okay, this is just the process. There's really nobody else at PandaDoc that I felt comfortable sending. Um, especially just like it's a big ask to be like, okay, hey, can you just uproot your life for three days and go do this? Yeah. <laughs> and you were like, and I was like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> There's like people back here that are like, hey, I need help. And I'm like, sorry, I'm in New York recording this thing. <laughs> um, all right. Switching gears a bit. I was listening to have you um, have you seen the marketing millennials podcast pop up anywhere in your life? No, never no. heard of it. It's because you're in sales. Oh, it's a really popular podcast. Um, and Daniel was uh, he's one of the hosts of the show. He was interviewing. Um, I never know how to say this guy's last name, so I just say. Jabawaki, but Ben Jabba, Jab, Jabby, Jabby from Privy. He's the CEO. Gotcha. That was very embarrassing for you. It is, but I kind of like Ben Jabawaki. I hope it doesn't offend him. They're a customer. Okay. Um, anyway, um, on this episode, they were they were talking about how Privy helps like e-commerce e companies, which is what they do, um, you know, do better marketing. And as they were diving into like email capture, um, it made me think about how this could relate to people listening to this. And it made me think of our man, Jed, because Jed is building up his brand and his side side hustle or passion project um, that he calls Practical Prospect. And he's already got like a couple thousand um, email addresses that he's captured. And I was thinking about this, I was like, Patrick, why aren't you doing something like this? Like, don't you want to be Scott Lee's in 10 years? You yeah. need to start that shit now. I asked like, myself that question. Jed yeah. is going to be the next Grant Cardone minus the, <laughs> the sexism, misogyny, and bipolar narcissism. But yeah, I'm placing so, bets on that kid. <laughs> next Grant Cardone. He's going to be like Grant Cardone, but nothing like him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jed is very impressive. The thing about Jed is he's one of the 
best like natural copywriters I've ever met. Like he's never, I don't think he's been taught much. He went through Praxis, so I'm sure there's some element of like that there, but it wasn't more than like a year of it. And he's 19. So he's only been doing it for a little over a year. And he's so good at it out of the box. Mm -hmm. And it's just crazy to me. There's a reason he has that many people. And not only is his copy good, it's it's very well um, structured in such a way that he has a goal for everything he writes. He talked to me about this where it's like, what is the person actually going to take away from this? How are they going to feel when they read it? And then he writes these goals up on the top. And while he's writing it, he checks to the goals to make sure it's accomplishing those things. And I think that's why it's so good because you never read one of his pieces and go, well, that wasn't helpful because he's always writing with a person in mind when he's doing it. I saw a LinkedIn post um, from that guy go, who writes, I forget where he's from. I'm pretty sure you follow him where he's like, good morning to everybody except Andrew Mugorn. He posted something that said like 90% of sales is copywriting. I would agree, Changed especially modern SDR work because people don't pick up the phone. You could dial a hundred times right now. Probably six people will pick up. So you have like, and, and three of those people will probably be like people you don't even need to talk to. So you only have like three real conversations a day. So the the time when the, the smooth talker is the best appointment setter is starting to go down. You could still do well. I mean, like if you're good, you can convert like two or three of those. Mm -hmm. But if you're really good at writing like stuff like Jed does, or you're really good at creating cadences and sequences, that's what really pays off in appointment setting. I think like closing is still very much a smooth talker kind of thing. It's a different skill set, but for the top of the funnel, it's completely changed. Um, I'm a big fan of people sharpening their writing skills. And I think Will Allred does a good job of coaching people on how to write with somebody in mind, how to um, improve your, your cold email writing skills. Shout out to Will Allred. Shout out to Lavender. Go to trylavender.com and check out their, their tools. Yes. Not a sponsor of the show, but just a really good friend. But they could be. Um, but they could be. And I think um, I think I just want to wrap up into our final segment here. Let's hit it. Um, I was thinking we could do a little freestyle rap battle. I agree. Okay. Um, you got a beat? Yeah, I can pull something up here. <laughs> yeah, I could maybe pull something up. It has 20 beats. Let's see. Whoa. Let's just feel a few out. See if we like them. Whoa. What you think you got? Oh, shit. Waiting for oh. waiting for oh. it. Like the beats. I like in. it, but it has a draw. Oh. Okay. Okay. You wanna go first or you want me to go first? Oldest thing in the city is a statue. My rap's like capsules. I come at you. The shit that I drop, it's not that hot. I'm not that experienced, but they used to call me Tupac. What? More like three Pac, huh? I ain't gave a shit till my mom came up. Everything I did in the city was blasphemous. They call me God. That's bad shit. All right. coming for you. Everything I did before you was like a third grader. Like a taker, I am just a raker I ain't give a shit because this shit's all made up I'm coming for you like my name was Jada Kiss I just learned about the locks There was two other guys in that group They were called Styles P And some other guy <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit, I fucking lost it But now I'm picking it back up And I'm coming for you The shit that I did in middle school was crazy I was on the chalkboard daily And I came for your teacher her name was Stacy. She used to teach me all these things like poetry and like poetry. They used to call me other stuff. They call me Mr. Miss Master. They call me all the shit faster. I'm going kind of crazy because I'm on the mic like my name was fucking lazy. Whoa. Damn, son. Okay. All right. Let's see you go. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm definitely not going to be as good as that. <laughs> let's let's pick up a different beat. At a certain point, you lose track of what's happening. <laughs> yeah, you just kind of <laughs> fall into the going. state of the flow. A little trap beat? Huh. Let's just let it, let's let it ride out for a second. That last beat was nice.
Yo, they call me T Dog. <laughs> Emotions in a free fall. You looking like a toddler on a fucking seesaw. Cowboy going yeehaw. Oh, fuck. That's what's up. That's what's up. You moving at a snail's pace. You in that sales rat race. I'm just over here in marketing where everything is sparkling. You know what's up. The thing is, my name is not Ding, so I will not continue to rap. I will just sing. Yeah, look at me go. I got the flow. Just walk out the door, trying to Shit's give beautiful. you some more. And I want to be on every single podcast in the world. I'm trying to be with your girl, too. Just kidding. Happily in a relationship, and it fits my lifestyle's great, but just look at one. me. I'm going to the sky. I'm going high. I'm going far. I'm going hard. I'm just over here, just trying to make it to the bar. Cause uh, I'll just rip it one more time. The beat's starting to slow down, but I'm finding my rhyme. I'm running out of time. Look at me. I got this dime. Just kidding. It's Patty D. You know that guy is the man <laughs> with the plan like Uncle Sammy's going ham. Put the money in his hand. He'll heat it up in his pan. He's in the kitchen. He's trying to fix and do something yummy to eat. Just trying to get off of the street. Quesadilla. Oh, yeah. I'm feeling this beat. Yeah, man. I love every time you go to talk about another woman, you're like, just kidding. I'm in a committed relationship. <laughs> <laughs> you said it again. You're like, I got to die. I'm just kidding. That's just my friend, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bro. Good. Yeah. Dude. That's it for the customer engagement lab. Thanks for tuning in this week. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, love you. Love you, Patrick. Love you, everybody. All right. Audio. Thanks for hanging out with us today on the Customer Engagement Lab. For more of Travis and Patrick's chaotic energy, subscribe to the show in your favorite podcast player. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, you would make our hearts smile if you left a super quick rating of the show. Just tap the number of stars you think the show deserves. It'll take you two seconds, I promise. Till next time.